Hi and welcome back for the fourth section of our course on data analysis with Python. This section is going to put together what we learned so far and it's also going to introduce a few more important concepts of machine learning with a practical exercise using a real dataset about the Titanic disaster. This video in particular is about performing exploratory analysis on the Titanic dataset. Before we start digging into the details, let's have an overview for this section. So we're going to introduce the Titanic disaster dataset first. We'll see how to get the data and how the dataset looks like. Then we're going to perform an exercise of exploratory analysis on this dataset. In the last video, we have briefly introduced the notion of data visualization, which is going to be discussed with more details during this exercise. We'll then introduce some concepts of machine learning, and in particular, we'll discuss supervised learning. These concepts are going to be applied to the Titanic dataset. We'll describe passenger survival prediction as a supervised learning problem, and then we'll implement it using scikit-learn. Now we are ready to get started with this section, and in particular, we are going to explore the Titanic disaster dataset. So for this session, we are going to introduce the libraries matplotlib for data visualization and scikit-learn for machine learning. We briefly uh, used the matplotlib in the end of the previous video, but we didn't dig too much into the details. So this is an opportunity to use the library properly. In order to install the libraries from a conda environment, we can simply run the command conda install followed by the library name. Please refer to the installation and setup video if you need more details about how to install Python packages. Now about the dataset. So the story of the Titanic should be well known. It was a ship that was supposed to be unsinkable, but then during its first journey, more than 100 years ago, the tragedy happened, and now the ship is at the bottom of the ocean. You can read more about the Titanic on the web. For example, Wikipedia has a page with a lot of details. About the dataset itself, there's a dataset about passenger survival, which is available on Kaggle. So you can download the data from this address, kaggle.com, slash c slash titanic slash data so this is the kaggle web page for the titanic disaster if you haven't used it before kaggle is a platform for predictive modeling and analytics competitions where companies upload their data sets while users compete to produce the best models to solve a variety of prediction problems so from here make sure you are on the tab data and you can download the files, in particular train and test.csv. We'll discuss the split between train and test when we introduce the machine learning concepts, but for now just make sure you have both the files locally. So now we can move on with the code. First we import pandas using the usual alias pd. You can see the location where I saved the data. You might want to fix the file and folder names according to your setup. Then we load up the data into a data frame. We simply focus on the training set first, and for the time being we just ignore the other file that we're going to use later on. So let's have a first look at the data. We have 891 records in the data frame. The test set also has about 400 records for a grand total of about 1300. This number is much smaller than the actual number of passengers on the Titanic, probably about half or so, because of course a lot of information has gone lost, but still uh, this is interesting nevertheless. Now using the head function, we can have a look at the structure of the data. We can see that we have several fields here, the passenger ID, which is just a serial number, then the survived variable, where zero means uh, the passenger did not survive, and one means the passenger survived. P class is the passenger class, first, second, or third, then the full name, the sex, male or female, the age expressing number of years, then uh, this acronym here represents the number of siblings or spouses aboard the Titanic followed by the number of parents or children aboard the Titanic. Then we have the ticket number, the fare paid by the passenger, the cabin number, and finally a letter to describe where the passenger has embarked. So S for Southampton in England, the starting point of the journey, 
or C for Cherbourg in France, and Q for Queenstown in Ireland. So below the data, there's a quick summary of the different attributes, so you can spend a moment to get familiar with the structure of this dataset. One of the first things we want to do, we want to check for missing data. So using the count function, we can see that a couple of fields, in particular age, cabin, and also embarked, have missing data. This may or may not be a problem for us, but it's good to be aware of it. We're going to look at the age distribution later, but first let's look at the extreme values. So we extract the minimum and maximum values for the field age. We can see that the minimum value is zero point something, so probably for little babies younger than one year, the age was originally given in number of months or maybe weeks and then normalized. On the other side, the highest value instead is 80. Next, we analyze the value distribution for some other interesting attributes. For example, we can see how many passengers survived using the value count function. If you prefer, you can also look at it in terms of percentage. So we can see that uh, more than 61% of the passengers did not survive. Similarly, we can also look at the gender distribution with uh, 577 males and uh, 314 females. And also at the distribution between classes, where the majority of the passengers been in uh, the third class. This is of course interesting, but maybe this kind of observations can benefit from displaying the data in a graphical form. As we have briefly introduced in the last video, this is quite easy to perform combining pandas with the matplotlib. Firstly, we need to call the magic function matplotlib inline. This will make sure that the plots are displayed within our notebook. Secondly, we are defining here an alpha color set to 50%. This will be used later just to make uh, some of the plots look a little bit more pretty. So starting from the uh, survival distribution, we can look at the value counts and then plot this distribution. For this type of plot, we choose a bar chart. So we set the kind equal to bar. And what we can see here is that the split is about 60 to 40, as we knew from before, but this is a nicer way to quickly get a grasp of our data. We can then perform the same exercise, splitting by gender. So here we can see that most of the passengers are female. Finally, we can also repeat the same exercise over the passenger classes. We also uh, want to sort by index because we want to make sure that the classes, first, second and third, are displayed in the correct order. And from this plot we can see that most of the passengers were in third class. Next, let's try to compare survival with age. We can use a scatter plot for this exercise, so we are essentially plotting two numeric variables and observing some correlations. Because the survival variable is a binary one, maybe a scatter plot is not the best tool, but it should give us some insight anyway. So in order to get a scatter plot, we simply pass scatter as kind, and then we need to specify which variables are comparing as x and y. So here x is a survived variable and y is the age. And uh, what we're seeing here is uh, one dot for each passenger and uh, we can notice that the two distributions look quite similar. So in both cases survived on the right and not survived on the left. There are passengers of all kinds of age. So let's look closer to the distribution of uh, age for passengers who survived. In order to do so, we filter our data set where the variable survival is equal to one, and then we focus on the variable age. We aggregate by counting the values with value counts, and then we sort them by age, and finally, we plot these numbers. 
This distribution and uh, more precisely the labels are quite difficult to read. This is because we have a huge number of values representing different ages. So in some situation, bucketing, also called uh, binning, offers the solution to avoid this problem. So if we are bucketing the age in groups of 10, essentially we know that the age goes from 0 to 80, so the boundaries of our bins are 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and so on. We then use the pandas function cut to bin the age, and we store the result in a new field called age bin. We could also customize the labels for the bins, but we don't need this for uh, this particular example. So after binning, we can plot the distribution again. And now we can see this is more easy to read. So we can see that uh, for the 20 to 30, or maybe even 20 to 40, that's the most common age. Now if we look at the same age distribution for passengers who did not survive, we can see that the plot is slightly different but not that much, so it looks more or less the same as before. In fact, if we look at the plot for all the passengers, without introducing the survival variable, we can see that the figure is essentially the same. So what we see here is that age doesn't tell us much about the survival of passenger. So let's look at other variables. Let's uh, cross-reference the passengers class with the survival. We can see that the passengers in first class here had a better luck, but the split is not so clear, it's maybe 60-40 again. For passengers in third class instead, the situation is quite the opposite, so the majority of the third class passengers did not survive. Next, let's look at gender. So we can see that the majority of male passengers did not survive. On the other side, looking at female passengers, we can see that the majority instead did survive. Now let's cross reference gender with class. So here we have male passengers who were in first class, and you can see the way we are using this binary indexing, combining the two variables. So we can see that the majority of male passengers in first class did not survive. And similarly, the majority of male passengers in third class also did not survive. But the distribution is much more skewed. So if you were a male passenger in third class, you had a really tough luck. On the other side, let's look at female passengers in first class. And here the distribution is quite clear, so almost all the female passengers in first class did survive. For female passengers in third class instead, the distribution is 50-50. So in summary, being a female in first class is a strong indication of survival, while being a male passenger in third class is a strong indication of not surviving, while age, as we've seen before, doesn't seem to play a big role here. This was an exercise to put everything together with a real dataset and extract some interesting information from our data. In particular, we have discussed the case for data visualization and we've seen how it can be useful for our data exploration or exploratory data analysis.